TGIF. Good morning. Happy Friday. You made it to the end of the week. Are you excited about the weekend? Big plans? Well, let's talk some voiceover. Welcome to the morning voiceover huddle. I'm Bill DeWeese, professional voiceover talent and voiceover coach and voiceover demo producer. And I'm so glad that you've uh, decided to stop by and join me. Our, our numbers, our group is growing every day. And I'm so excited that you're here. We do it every weekday morning at about this time. I share a thought, tip, strategy, something to help you to become more profitable, hey, uh, to help you make more money in voiceover. Speaking of which, before we get in today's Q&A, by the way, so if you have a question, make sure you put it in the um, in the live uh, chat there. Let me know who you are, what your name is, and what you're watching and, uh, and or listening from this morning as well. So speaking of making more money in voiceover, you know, the demo, the demo is the thing. But as we talked about yesterday, if you're just getting started, it's better to get what I would refer to as of concept, which where you actually figure out kind of what you're doing and prove that you can make money doing this. And the DIY demo is the best way to do that. Um, and so to that end, this Tuesday, this Tuesday evening at beginning at eight o'clock PM Eastern time, I'm doing a full blown coaching live training event on how to create beginning to end a DIY demo with some amazing bonuses, like an over the shoulder video where I'm going to show you, in addition to talking about it and teach you in the webinar, I'm going to actually provide you with a companion video where I go through the entire process. So it's limited to 100 people and it's starting to fill up fast. Yesterday, we really started to pick up momentum. So we limited it to, to 100 so that we can make sure to give, uh, to interact and answer questions for those who are there. So if you want to be uh, in this program, this event, Make sure you go in the description below and click the link, get all the information, get signed up ASAP. All right, let's talk voiceover this morning. Let's see what we have questions for. We've got uh, Carlin in Lake Como, Italy. Good morning. How do I best word an email for direct marketing? Seeking VO jobs, please. Um, Carlin, that's a very, very good question. And as I mentioned just a moment ago, it really is all about the demo. So in any marketing, be it direct or otherwise, your demo is the thing. That is your that is your sales piece. That more than anything else, more than anything you could possibly say or do, um, is going to seal the deal in terms of opening up the opportunity for you. So think of it this way. Your marketing is not necessarily to try to get a job. Your marketing is to get people to listen to your demo. Because again, the demo is what does the heavy lifting here. My advice when it comes to direct marketing, and when we say direct marketing, we're talking about uh, reaching out to, whether it's email or phone call or how, whatever, pigeon, carrier pigeon, tin cans of a string, however you decide to communicate with a prospective client, um, if you do it directly, that is direct marketing, where you're reaching out directly to that person. I recommend that you not do it until you have your pro demos. And the reason is, is, is quite simply this. And it's not that you can't get work with a DIY demo. It's just that the numbers are pretty high to begin with. In other words, you have to put a lot in to get a little bit out. Even with your pro demos, you may have to send three, 400 emails to get one or two positive responses. And when I say positive responses, meaning, hey, thanks for sending your demo. Sounds great. We'll keep you in mind. And then it may take a bunch of those to eventually get the job. Now, I'm not saying that to discourage you and say you shouldn't do it. You should do it. That's part of my marketing strategy because it's, it is a numbers game. But if it's, you're using a DIY demo that's not as competitive, well, you can take those numbers. Let's say it takes three or 400. Maybe it'll take a thousand or 2000. Uh, again, not to discourage you. I'm just saying that there are more efficient ways of getting work, you know, earlier on, especially with your DIY demo. But let's say, okay, you're going to do, do the direct marketing thing. So if you're sending an email, what do you say? Well, here's the thing. Less is more. Whenever you're communicating with a business person, you have to keep in mind, you have to look at it from their perspective. They're being inundated with email and stuff every day. These video producers, they've got a lot going on. They're in the field, they're, they're shooting, they're editing. Uh, oftentimes it's a small shop, maybe two, three, four, five people. And so their chief cook and bottle washer in addition to you know their, their video editing duties. So if you want to, if you want them to listen to your demo, you've got to get right to the point. In the, the subject line of your email, don't try to be clever. 
Don't try to be cute to try to get them to open it up. Let them know what it is. For instance, I typically, if I'm going to send out an email, I'm going to write voiceover. That way they know there's no question what this is about. And if they're not interested in voiceover, great, then skip it. That's fine. You know, no need to waste their time with it. But I'm not going to try to do something that's clever. And then they open it up and they go, oh, great, another voiceover talent. And then, you know, they're pissed off and, and uh, that's not a good way to, to build a bridge. But if they know what it is, at least they know what it is and they can make that choice as to whether that's something they want to find out more about. Within the email itself, keep it simple. I say typically something along the line, I'm a professional voiceover talent. Um, and I, I'll, like, I'll, I'll mention that I'm full-time because I am full-time. But if you're not, you know, don't worry about it. Uh, I've got some credits, so I'll mention credits. If you don't have good credits, don't mention it. You could just say, you know, I am Carl Lynn. I'm a, I'm a female voiceover talent. If you're ever in need of a, of a good female voice, I invite you to check out my demos. I mean, literally, it can be that simple and that short. Uh, so I believe less is more. Jay, new VO twist had a line as a newscaster in a movie being produ produced called Sheepdog starring Stephen Graham. Jay, congrats. That is awesome. Yeah, love. Love to hear victories like that. That's awesome. Hey, Rob. Got in early. He's back to Ohio. Uh, fun. It's the first time I've done this. Looking forward to getting back home in my real studio. Yeah, good deal. I know you've been uh, working out of your pillow for it. Pastor Don in Rochester, Indiana. Hello, new to the Blueprint. So new, new voiceover Blueprint student and Pastor Don, glad to have you in there. And Owen, you grad where I used to teach a broadcaster from way back, brown tape all over the floor. <laughs> meaning the magnetic tape we used to splice up with uh, with uh, razor blades. Hey, Jonathan, how are you doing? Uh, Susan in New Jersey. Sandra, good morning in Dallas-Fort Worth. Patrick, good morning to you in Maryland. Doug in Greensboro, North Carolina. Uh, Gretchen in Adrian, Michigan. And by the way, it is, it is a Q&A this morning. So if you have a question, uh, I can answer a couple more. Throw them up here in the live chat, and I'll be glad to do that. Uh, let's see, Janet in Florida, Stephen Bucyrus, Melissa, good morning to you in San Diego. Signed up for the DIY demo training event. Can't wait. Melissa, I can't wait either. Thanks. I'm looking forward to it. Hey, Aaron, happy weekend to you in Boston. Chad, good morning. Coming to you from the home of the great American race. Happy Daytona 500 weekend. <laughs> awesome. Okay, let's see here. Oops, the live stream, as it often does, the chat moved on me as it fills up here. So let me back up and find out where we were at. Um, Dr. Bob in Clearwater, Florida, Go Blueprint and DIY Demo. That's right, Bob. Thanks. Hey, Bob in Reedsville, North Carolina. Guidance on whether in terms of incorporating, becoming an LLC for your business, I am going to I'm going to defer that to a professional because the answer would not necessarily be the same for everyone. Uh, there there does come a time when you start making money, you should talk to a tax pro uh, who can tell you what will help you the best in terms of you know protecting you, shielding you from unnecessary taxes, keeping as much as much money as you possibly can. Um, for some, they stay sole proprietor, uh, some LLC, some incorporate. I incorporated and it's, uh, you know, for my situation and where I live, what I make, yada, 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 that's best for me. But my guidance is talk to a tax professional. I wouldn't worry about it when you're first getting started, you know, start as a sole proprietor, but when you start making, you know, consistent income early on, I would talk to one just to make sure uh, that you're set up the way you should be set up. John and Rhinebeck, New York, looking forward to Tuesday's uh, live training event. Awesome, John. I want to see all you guys there. Uh, we've got, okay, Tom West of Indianapolis. Yep, see you Tuesday night. Awesome. Hey, Mark in Wilmington, North Carolina. Aaron, I recently relocated houses and my setup is now in a bedroom near a noisy train stop. Any suggestions or ideas for soundproofing windows? Well, what you can do, you could find, you could, you could like stuff the windows with with material like you could take heavy heavy material maybe acoustic blankets if you want to you know spend the money or get heavy duty moving blankets um these have you ever do you have a weighted or have you ever checked out a weighted blanket i've got one these things weigh like 20 25 pounds they're dense 
they, I've always thought they would make great material in terms of stopping, you know, helping to, to knock down noise. Uh, uh, you could get something like, uh, you know, uh, insulation material that you cut to size and kind of plug it in there. You could get like theatrical curtains, those heavy acoustic curtains and hang those across there. Those are just a few ideas. Hey, Jolie, happy weekend to you, Stephen Oshkosh. Good morning, Amanda. Is it better to start Fiverr first or try for audiobooks first if you're just starting out? I would do both. Let me tell you why. Fiverr is a longer, it's a longer road uh, to get traction. Whereas audiobooks, you could start getting work immediately. So I would set up a Fiverr account. And by the way, you may have heard me share my story about getting dinged. It was worse than being dinged. I mean, I was sent to the, the Fi Fiverr jail for like a year, year and a half, because there was um, a communication issue where I didn't communicate with a client quickly enough. And um, I still don't, I, I still don't know how I missed it. I, I'm still confused on the whole topic. Doesn't matter. Point being, uh, I was taken from top level back down to the very bottom again. And I am just now starting to, I've, I booked a job yesterday and I think a job two days before that. And somebody just reached out to again to me today. So here a year and a half later, you know, I'm starting to gain momentum. So point being, it takes a while to get momentum with Fiverr. While you, after you set up your profile, you're waiting to get that momentum, you can go on ACX and start auditioning immediately. Boom. You know, I would do like 10 auditions a day until I got a couple of books in the hopper that you're working on. Uh, that's, that's the way I would approach it. Hey, Paul in San Diego, first live chat, first day with my new equipment. Looking forward to getting the demo on. Awesome, Paul. Good to have you here this morning. Good evening to uh, Phil in Tokyo. Oh, he's going to be on Tuesday night's class as well. I, I thought I saw your name come through there. Uh, let's see here. Anthony in Bell Buckle, Tennessee. Good morning. Wayne is retiring soon. Can I build this business working only four days a week? Yes, you can. Uh, you can, I mean, you can set it up however you want. The main thing is this, is that however you're set up and whatever hours you work, as you begin to work with clients, you need to just communicate with them so they have, they know what to expect. Because the worst thing you can do is take on somebody, begin working with somebody and not let them know, like, for instance, if you're having a three, you have a three day weekend, let's say you don't work Friday through Sunday, they just need to understand not to expect to hear back from you until Monday. So as long as you communicate, you should be in good shape, but that's the key. Hey, Ty in Warsaw, Indiana. Good morning. Um, where am I? Okay. Thomas in Tacoma, Washington. What kind of content should we use for the first DIY demo, especially the marketing? Should it be found online or homemade content? No, when you're, you know, your content should be real. When you're creating a demo, any demo should be done. Just take, go to YouTube or iSpot.tv, get real commercials, real corporate videos, transcribe them. And uh, as long as you're using a sample of it for demonstration purposes, it's fair use. So you should be good there. Steven in Atlanta, good morning. Gordon in Abilene, Texas. Uh, waiting on the Fee Find 670 to be delivered today. So he can start making his demos. Love it, Gordon. Awesome. Congrats. So that's a, it's a solid microphone. I've got one. Hey, uh, Craig. Does the blueprint cover anything about setting up taxes? No. And the reason for that, Craig, is because you need to talk to a tax professional. Um, every individual situation is going to be different. That's why if it was something, if it was like a one size fits all situation, that would be one thing, but you need personalized advice from a tax professional. So that's why I refer everybody to a local professional who can help you with that. Carlin says, is the training, oh, you're referring to the Tuesday event, is it recorded so others in different time zones can rewatch? Oh yeah, Carlin, everything I do is recorded. So uh, yeah, if you sign up and you're part of that class, and you're not there because of the time, which obviously that would not be a good time for you. I'm not sure what time it would be, but uh, yeah, it would be like the middle of the night. I'm pretty sure um, it's you, you own that program indefinitely. I mean, you have it, you know, you can log in and watch it whenever you want as many times as you want, you know, forever. So that's the way I do all of my, uh, my training programs. So yeah, 
There you go. Love to have you in there, Carlin. Jonathan, what is my strategy timing to follow up after a warm response from a con uh, contact? Okay, well, I'm going to make this my last question this morning. This is a really good one. So one of the most important aspects of marketing is this. The first, the first thing is you want to get on somebody's radar. So the first objective is to get on radar. The second objective is to stay on radar. That's really important. And that is where a lot of people drop the ball. They think of marketing as saying, essentially, hey, here I am. I'm a voiceover talent. You know, see me, see me, hear me, hear me. And then somebody does and they think, okay, great. Okay, I'm done. Then they move on. No, that's just the beginning. So yes, it, it, in a sense, that's what we are doing. We're like, hey, here I am. Here's my demo. See me, hear me. And once they do, and if they respond positively and say, oh, yeah, hey, thanks for sending us. Sounds great. We'll keep you in mind. Okay, now the work has just begun. So what I do is I put those people in a, I don't keep track of everybody I send stuff to or contact. That would be, that's a waste of time and energy. Uh, but the people who respond back to me, that's your gold, all right? So they may not need you now. They might, might not even need you next month, but maybe next, maybe three months from now, maybe tomorrow, maybe next year. But you want to make sure that when that time comes up, that they haven't forgotten about you because trust me, they will. You know, things come, get on people's radar. And then with each day that passes, it fades, it fades. And in a few days, you're just a distant memory. So back to Jonathan's question, here's the thing. A generally accepted rule of marketing is this. If you want to stay on somebody's radar in their consciousness, so they don't forget about you, they need to hear from you about six times a year. That seems like a lot. In the world of advertising, I think the, the rule of thumb is somebody, will, the average person won't, won't uh, respond to an ad until they've seen it like 30 something times. People are distracted. You know, we're distracted. We've got a lot of stuff going on. And the last thing on uh, a, a producer, a content producer's mind usually is a voiceover talent. I mean, finding one until, until it's not, until they actually need somebody. And then you want to make sure again that you're in their consciousness and on their radar. So what that breaks down to Jonathan specifically is about once every two months, you want to reach out and have a marketing touch. That way you're starting to fade. And then in two months, it's like, oh, Jonathan. Yeah, two, you're starting to fade. Then, oh, Jonathan pops up. And then who knows, you know, maybe next week, it's like this project comes up, they need a voice and they, oh yeah, Jonathan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the guy who has a great demo. So that's how, that's how you do that. And that's how you, that's how you stay on the radar. Hey guys, thanks so much for checking in this morning. I appreciate it. I really hope to see you all on the Tuesday uh, training event. It, again, it begins at eight o'clock Eastern time. And um, in the description below is the link. Get in before it fills up because at 100, it's capped. All right, guys, have a fantastic weekend. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.